We're back for another review. Both Bravos and Lyra received a lot of requests, but I ended up going with the Wanderers and Artists this time around because I've seen a lot of Bravos content lately and I feel like the Lyra players have been a little underserved. But fear not, we'll be going over the ins and outs of Bravos very soon. Make sure to leave a like if you're enjoying the series and subscribe to stay informed about all things altered. As a reminder, we'll be rating the cards on a scale from 1 to 3 for each hero, where a 1 suggests that a card will see little or no play, a 2 indicates it'll likely see play in some decks, and a 3 suggests it's very strong and it'll likely be in most decks for that hero. Now let's get acquainted with the heroes representing the Lyra faction. You'll be picking from Nevenka and Blotch, Ben and Crowbar, and Iraq and Kibble. Nevenka brings chaos and has a hero effect that varies widely depending on the luck of the dice. You'll want cards like the Rare Martingale or Lyra Bastion that can help manipulate your rolls, as well as cards that can roll dice or benefit from doing so, like the Izmir Mage Dancer. Ben and Crowbar randomly put one card in hand, one in mana, and one in reserve each day. With lots of cards going straight to the reserve, you can take advantage of things with a strong support ability like the Hatter. You also have a strong resource game with the extra resupply and can use cards like Acapella Training to help outlast your opponent. Iraq has a different approach and gets a performance counter each time you play a character with a base statistic of zero. Eventually you'll be able to remove five counters to play the top card of your deck for free. Anything like the Ouroboros Trickster with a base statistic of zero will fit well. And powerful boss characters like Hydrasena are the payoff you're looking to get for free off the top of the deck. And with the introductions out of the way, let's see what cards are here to support each of these heroes. The first character is Martingale. I think you have to upgrade this to the rare for Nevenka, but for Fen and Crowbar and Iraq and Kibble, I think this is really good. The zero is nice and the supportability is strong too, so I feel like it's a must run for them. Looking at the rare, now it can give plus one to your dice rolls, and this is the only way you can guarantee you won't get a one with Nevenka, so I think you have to run this. But for the other heroes, the upgrade doesn't really help with their game plan, so I'm not going to be running it. For the Trickster, I think it's pretty strong the amount of stats you can get for the cost and with the zeros it'll fit perfectly in a rack for fen i think you might run this but i don't think it's completely necessary and so i'm just gonna give it a two for now but nevenka i think that this is super strong as well it's just another cheap card that can trigger like a dice roll looking at the rare version though i'm not a big fan of the upgrade i don't like the extra cost from the reserve and i don't think it's worth the chain so i don't think you'll see play anywhere Esmeralda is a great cheap character. It seems like a must run in Iraq and for Fen, I feel like you'll want to be running this too because you'll have a lot of cards that are better from reserve and appreciate the resupply, but it will be sad if you put this straight into the reserve, so maybe some people will cut it. And for Nevenka, this could see a lot of play too, but since the stats are just okay and the effect doesn't completely synergize with her, I don't think you have to run it. Looking at the upgrade, I think that this is especially unnecessary now for Nevenka, but for Fen, I feel like this could be pretty good because now it'll be better from reserve. The cost of three though is a little high, so I don't think it's necessary and for Iraq I like this because if you get it off the top of the deck now you will trigger the ability but I still don't know if it's worth the rare slot. Lear Scald has some kind of embarrassingly low stats compared to the Pathfinder from Bravos or the Frog Prince from Ordis it just has one less in the biome and so I feel like it's a little underwhelming. I'm gonna give it a one for everyone except for Iraq. It can get a two just because you do need characters with zeros but I think with more expansions and cards available you won't be running this. For the rare the effect doesn't help you as much in Nevenka, so I'm just gonna give it a one, but I think this is all right now for Fen because it has a nice support ability and you can also cycle a bad card like an Esmeralda from your reserve to look for something better. So I think it could see play there for sure. And for Iraq, I think this is pretty good too. Just because of the support ability, you can use it to get something like a Hydra into play early. And I think people will definitely be messing around with this. Lear Thespian seems cool, but it only really works well if you have a character that has three zeros in stats like the Ouroboros Trickster. And right now there's only two of those in Trickster and the rare Anansi. And I don't think that Anansi is that great. So I feel like it's just a little too inconsistent to trigger this effect and even though the stats are pretty good I think this is like a card for a future expansion not really for right now I'll give it a one for most of the heroes and maybe a two for Fen because I think she's the most likely to be able to run the characters with three zeros so maybe this could fit there but I'm not super impressed with this card right now for the rare the buff is bigger but I think that the common was probably good enough and since it's a little hard to trigger this I don't think it's worth going for the rare slot Hathor has some amazing stats. I'm going to give this threes across the board. I think it's very strong for a common, and then you can use it from the reserve to return a rare or unique card to your hand. So even though it costs more there, you can basically swap it out for something that you want anyways. And yeah, it just seems super good everywhere. I don't love the change to the rare though, because it doesn't help you at all if you use the support ability. And if you just want this for the decreased cost, I feel like you'd want to use the rare navigator maybe, or the pathfinder instead, and just keep this as a common. Speaking of the navigator, in the common form, its stats are abysmal. 
I don't think we'll see this anywhere. And looking at the rare, it looks a little bit better now, but I still don't think it's that great in Nevenka or Fen. And for a rack, I'm just gonna give it a two. I honestly think you'll probably want to run the rare Pathfinder instead since you get a three mountain and water. I don't think that losing three in one of the biomes is worth getting just a plus one in one of the others. I also don't really like any of these effects that resupply from the reserve effect since they always come on rare cards. I feel like at that point, I'd rather just run a rare card that's good itself in the reserve instead of one where I'm hoping to hit something good when I discard it. So yeah, I'm not a super big fan of this card. And Nancy can get a lot of boosts from its effect. I think it's a cool card and it works perfectly with Fen. It's gonna be one of the main cards there. For a rack though, this doesn't have a zero and it doesn't really have a lot of synergy. For Nevenka, I think that this is all right. You probably won't be getting three boosts ever, but since you can still get one or two, I think it's okay, it might see play, only because it's a common. Looking at the rare, the three zeros is cool to be able to have this synergize with some of the cards like Lyra Thespian or Young Su. But outside of that synergy, I think it's just purely worse than the common. In multiplayer, it'd be really good because you can add up the cards from more reserves, but if your opponent has two cards in their reserve, you only get the two boosts just to make up for the loss in stats from the common, so it's basically the same or worse in all scenarios. I am giving it a two now in Iraq just because this version actually has synergy, but I still don't think it's that great because most of the time it'll just be like a 3-3-3. Three, three, three. I don't know, maybe people will think that that's better than the Chronicler, so I'm gonna give it a little bit of a chance. And for fan, if people are running those cards I mentioned, like Young Su, maybe they'll slot this in, but I think it's probably not going to see a lot of play. The Cloth Dancer is a pretty good disruption, but the stats aren't amazing and the cost is a little high. I think this could see play anywhere if giving something fleeting turns out to be really strong, but if the meta doesn't really call for it, I feel like this will be one of the first things to leave people's decks. And for the rare, giving fleeting to everything seems strong, but a lot of the times you're only going to hit one thing anyway, so I don't think it's worth the rare slot and the worst stats. Before we had the full set, Lyra Chronicler was pretty much a must run, but now I feel like there's a lot of competition for other cards with pretty decent stats. This is definitely an all right card everywhere but it's a little bit weaker than similar cards from other factions and i think it'll be something that gets replaced quickly as more cards come out in future expansions for the rare i've already talked about this supportability and it's not something i'm a fan of even in fan i think it's just better to run a stronger rare than to have something like this so yeah i'm just giving this ones everywhere the Incaster can do some cool cycling, and with two of them, you can actually combo them to get infinite resources, but the stats don't really work with the rack, and I think you'll have some better options in Fen as well. For Nevenka though, I feel like right now, you only have a couple really good cards, and you're going to want to be able to cycle them over and over, things like Martingale or the Mage Dancer, and so I think this could be pretty good for now, so that you can just use those key cards over again. I like the costing of the rare a lot more. This doesn't really fit in a rack still, but for Fen, I think this could be pretty good. I'm not convinced though that it's a must run, because I feel like you have some other similar cards cards like Lyra Scald Rare that are competing against this, so I don't think all players are going to be running this card, but it is pretty good. And for Nevenka, I think the common's almost as good, so I don't know if I'm sold on this being a 3 in the rare, I think it's just a might run kind of card. Tanuki is Lyra's main sabotage, and with the 0, I think this is great for a rack. For Fen, since it doesn't work from the reserve, I feel like it's not necessarily a must run. You might run around something like Spycraft or Tinkerbell, where you can be more guaranteed to get the sabotage no matter where it ends up. But for Nevenka, since I don't think she has enough of her own card yet, I feel like she'll welcome a generically strong card like this. And for the rare with the ability to roll a dice, I think that could be pretty good in Nevenka, so I'm still going to give it a 3. But for the other two heroes where you don't benefit from a dice roll, and you're just getting a sabotage half the time, I don't think it's worth the rare slot. Sandman can be a great body and removal at the end of the game, but it's not super good in the mid game. You'll probably only be using it to sleep one of your own characters, and with just okay stats, I feel like this is just a fine card, and it might see play anywhere, but it's not completely necessary. It'll probably just depend on how good sleep is to it answer to current cards in the meta if there's a lot of anchored or some really insane things like it's Shenlong that are coming out on the last day this will see more play but if it's just a bunch of cheap characters it'll probably see less the rare upgrade though is interesting, giving two boosts to the character you sleep can make it a lot better when it sleeps your own characters. I'm actually going to give this a 3 now for Nevenka, because I think this can combo really well with the Martingale. At that point you can be adding one to your rolls for two days in a row, and the Martingale stats are pretty weak, so you're not really sad to lose them the first day, but then it's a powerhouse the second day when it gets that plus 2. But there's not a ton of synergy here for Fen, and for Rack, I think that this might still have a little bit of a place, because you can use it to sleep something of your own the day before you use it Rack's effect and have two characters at the start for free to help push both expeditions. So I think there's some possibility there, but definitely not necessary. 
Krupia has the same net stats as the Chronicler, but now you get a little bit of card advantage as well. I feel like the common though isn't great for its cost, especially from the reserve. So I'm going to give it a 2 to Nevenka because of the dice roll and a 2 to Iraq because of the 0, but I don't think you'll really want this in Fen. For the rare though now, getting those extra stats and the optional support ability from the reserve makes this a lot more attractive. As a good card with the dice roll to boot, I think you'll need this in Nevenka. And for Fen, with the good support ability and strong stats now, I think this is pretty great as well. And this could honestly even shine in Iraq. Maybe you'll prefer something like Mighty Jin if you're trying to ramp into Hydra, but the stats are still good here and it kind of fits with a lot of what you're wanting to do. So I think this could even see a lot of play there as well. The Hatter comes in with very similar costing and stats, but a totally different effect. You won't be able to run too many four cost cards or you'll get awkward hands, but I think some decks might still try to run this and the Croupier or opt for this one instead. The common's much better for Fen because if you put it straight into the reserve, you get this amazing free anchor effect. And for Nevenka, I think this could be pretty good still too. The Nevenka players I talked to said it's a three so that you can get additional use out of the boost that she gives to characters and you can also have your mage dancer stick around. So I can definitely see that, but I'd want to test it a little more to know for sure for myself. And for Rack, this is fine. I honestly think though that anchoring your characters isn't super strong since they have a lot of zeros when you move regions. The stats might not be relevant anymore. So I think this is definitely not necessary there, but it is an option. With the rare, you get basically the same stats just switched around in the regions. And yeah, the change in the cost from reserve isn't amazing since you're mostly running it for the support ability. So I don't really see this seeing any play. And Amahe disappoints me a little bit as well. It doesn't do anything for Iraq. And in Nevenka, I think at this point, you'll want to be playing things like your Croupier or maybe even an Ismodius. So I don't think you'll want to be spending your mana on this card. But in Fen, since you'll have a lot of stuff in the reserve and maybe things that aren't good there, I could see this being all right. Since it costs so much, it'll be easy for people to use removal on. But it also means that you aren't spending as many cards that turn to help your resource game. So I think that averages out to this just being fine, but not necessary. For the rare, it's going to be pretty hard to get more value out of this for most of the heroes. For Fen, you could get a ton of draw, and that might be good if you're trying to dig for your uniques or for like a removal card, but I think a lot of times this is going to be overkill, and most of your cards are better in the reserve, so I think that getting rid of them from there isn't necessarily good, so I think that this is good in some situations, but not necessary in every version of the deck. Asmodeus has a surprisingly good rate. If you hit the anchor, you're really happy, and in Nevenka where you can boost it once more and kind of have a little bit of control over your dice rolls. You can do some pretty nasty things with this. In Fen, I think some people might want some strong value cards and the anchor could be pretty cool, but since you're at the mercy of the dice rolls, I think this card's far from necessary. And in Iraq, you don't really want to play this from hand, but it is cool to get this off the top of the deck. So I think some people are going to run it just to increase their odds of hitting something good and then just use it as a mana orb when they don't. The rare is actually worse to get off of the top of the deck with Iraq, so you're not going to see the upgrade there. And I don't think this is great for Fen either. But maybe Nevenka would like the decreased cost, but I'm only going to give it a 2 because it feels like a side grade from the common. And while I'll definitely be looking to get my Loki signed by the community manager Loki Nox, I'm probably not going to be playing them in any of these heroes. The stats are unimpressive and you give your opponent quite a few cards back, so even if you mess them up, I don't think you're really going to be putting them in a bad position. For the rare, you can get rid of the reserves now too, but I still don't think this is a card we're looking for in Beyond the Gates. It's definitely fine, but if you're not going second and you end up going 0-2 to play this, I think you'll be pretty sad and so yeah, I don't think it'll see a ton of play. Looking at the rares, Tinkerbell's an alternative sabotage to Tanuki. I think this is nice and fen because you can have access to the sabotage whether it starts in your hand or the reserve. And with pretty decent stats, this honestly might see play in Nevenka as well. And Frankenstein's basically just a festival card, but it is a really good one, giving you a two cost card that can give something fleeting, anchored, or asleep from the reserve if you use it on the rare festival. But I think that the alternate win condition is probably going to be best in Fen and not that competitively viable anywhere else, so I'll only give it a two there and a one for the other heroes. And Pathfinder has some pretty good stats for Lyra, but most of the other factions are getting a card like this as a common, so having to use your rare on this feels a little bad. Maybe it could see play in Nevenka and Fen because you just need the stats so much, but I don't think that's going to be the case. For Iraq though, since this has a zero, I think this could definitely see play, but it's still not an amazing card. It's one of those cards that might see play a decent amount in this first expansion, but it'll be the first thing to go once we have more options available. Tama goes in is some pretty good stats, and only having to have 6 mana isn't that much. This doesn't really work with Iraq, but for the other two heroes, I think this might see play, especially if you're running something like Mighty Jin. It can be a little awkward if you draw one or two of these early, especially in Fen where you don't control your mana, but the payoff's pretty alright, so it definitely might see play. 
And speaking of Mighty Gen, this is a card I'm a big fan of, but I think some other people don't like it quite as much as me. I think though in Fen, you kind of need that mana ramp to be able to have an advantage over your opponent, and it's just so good from the reserve that I feel like I have to run it. And in Iraq too, with the zero, it's pretty great, especially if you're trying to play the Hydra from hand eventually, I think that the mana ramp would be helpful. The place that has the least use though is Nevenka, where I think it's still fine to be able to get the ramp, but it's far from necessary there. And Kappa has decent stats, but with no effect and the high cost, I just don't really see it seeing a ton of play. Shenlong's pretty similar, you can pay a little bit more to get a lot more in stats, but I have a hard time believing people will want to play this from their hand. I honestly think that the common Asmodeus is as good or better, so you probably won't use the rare slot on this, except for maybe in Iraq where you can get off the top of the deck. Someone might even want to run both of them just to have more cards to hit with that effect. And Kyber is another card that would be great to get off of the top of the deck with the rack. You might run it just for that possibility, but it's just a mana orb all the other times, and you're really going to have to be careful. You probably can't run too many cards that are only good off of the top of the deck, so this is far from necessary. In Fen, I think this costs way too much, so that if you get it early, it would just mess up your hand, and you won't be able to get around that, so I don't think this will see play. For Nevenka, though, my hot take is... I think this is a kind of cool card, or maybe at least just a fun card. It's really cool to be able to boost it with her effect so that you can get a bigger presence in both expeditions, and if you anchor it, that's just like the most insane turn ever. But even with the perfect setup, that's not going to be guaranteed, so yeah, maybe this isn't a competitive card, but I mean it might be worth trying. Kodama's effect is pretty cool, and maybe you'll see it in Nevenka so that you can anchor some of your key cards or something that you've boosted up, but it is a little awkward to play it from hand, so it's far from necessary. For Fen, since you're hitting this from the reserve half the time, I think it'll be really strong just as like a 3-3-3 three, three, three for 2 or for the anchor. If you're not running Hatter, you'll probably cut this too, but if you're building around anchoring those 3 drops, I think this is a must run. And this isn't really doing anything for a rack, so yeah, it's just a 1 there. Aloe is a pretty cool card, but when you don't get the boost like Intasia, it feels a lot worse. Nevenka can boost it up though, and so I think it could be alright there. And for Fen, I think you enjoy resupply so much that you still might run this, but with no real way to boost it, the stats get pretty mediocre. So I don't really think I'll be running this, but people could definitely mess around with it. And for Rack, I really don't like this because even if you get it off of the top of the deck, you'd have to play 1 to anchor it, so I'm just not a fan of this card there. I really thought Yongsu would feel a lot better in this expansion than it does. I think we just didn't quite get enough cards that have three zeros to make this work. Since it's a little inconsistent to pull off, I think you'd probably just run the Thespian instead, or Cerninus, which gives you foreign stats all the time. And speaking of, I think this card's better than Young Su. In Fen, I think you just need some generically strong cards, especially if you're trying to anchor a three drop. And even in Iraq, in a slightly less turbo version, I feel like you could be happy to have this on day one to trade with your opponent, because if you only have cards with zeros, it's pretty likely that they'll get a double advance on the first day. Even in Ivanka, with the decent stats, I think that can make this worth running. Coneman's pretty similar to Aloe Vera, but I think in Fen you'd rather have the resupply, so I'm going to give this a 1. And in Iraq, if you're running a card that's mostly just good to hit off of the deck, I don't think it's going to be this. But for Nevenka, since you can give this a boost and get 4-4-4 four, four, four in stats over 2 days, I think this is at least worth considering. And if Angered's not good enough, Hydra brings Eternal to the table. This is your best card to get with the Rax effect, so yeah, it's definitely a must run. And you can even play it early on pretty easily in most of these heroes, with cards that have support abilities that make things cost one less or Mighty Jin. For Nefenka and Fen, I don't think it's quite as necessary, because if you're afraid of removal, you might not want to run this, but it is such a good win condition against decks that aren't ready for it, so it could definitely see play anywhere. The Paper Herald's definitely a fine card, but I think it's a little underwhelming for a rare. Maybe since it has the zero, you'll run this in a rack in a deck that wants to try and trigger the hero like three times throughout the game, but I don't see this seeing a ton of play. And this Robin Hood's a little hard to rate. Since it only hits characters, it'll depend on what type of decks are popular in the meta, but making everything cost plus one is really strong, and this does have a zero for a rack. Who knows, in Nevenka you can even anchor this, and in Fen the support ability is nice, so I think this could honestly see play anywhere, but we'll just kind of have to wait and see where it fits best. The Studious Disciple Rare feels a little underwhelming. I don't think you're running it in Nevenka, but maybe you'll run this in a really controlling Fen deck. You might have a lot of cards like Spycraft and Acapella Training that you could play afterwards for cheap, so it could possibly have a place there. And it could definitely see some play in Iraq as well, since it has the zero. Especially if you go all in on Mind Apotheosis, the support ability could be good too. And here's the Mage Dancer we've been talking about. This is amazing for Nevenka, where it can get boosted up really quick with your dice rolls, and it only costs one from the reserve. But since dice rolls are few and far between for the other heroes, I don't think you'll see play. Alice has slightly worse stats than Cerniness, so if you're running it, it's going to be for that support ability. But I think the card's a little underwhelming, and if it sees play, it'll probably only be in Fen. 
Flamel's alright too, but the stats are just okay, and I think off you go is your only really good target for it in Lyra. Maybe you'll want this to cycle some of your spells into controlling Fen, but I don't expect this to see a lot of play anywhere. And Acapella Training is a super interesting card. It's basically like a preemptive sabotage, giving something fleeting so it never even hits the reserve. I think Fen has some of the best control tools, and you can use this to slow play your turn, so I bet it'll see a lot of play there. And this might even get picked up by Nevenka decks, but for a rack, it's such a bad hit off the top, I don't think it's worth the risk. And if you want to have this kind of effect, I think you'd rather just have it twice with the common instead of upgrading to the rare and getting a draw, so yeah, I don't really think this version will see play. Ride the Blyfrost has some great flavor, but I don't think the effect is practical, so it's just going to get ones. The rare gets a little crazier, but I still don't see this having competitive viability, so I'm just going to keep the ones everywhere. Twinkle Twinkle could be good. It's pretty similar to Beauty Sleep, costing 4 total if you use it twice to sleep 2 characters, but it does have a cool support ability so you don't have to use it the second time. I think this could see some play in Fen where you're happy to have the support ability or the option to sleep something, and maybe even Nevenka this could be a good way to close out the game, but I feel like since this isn't great early in a lot of matchups, and since it's a little more expensive than Beauty Sleep, it's not quite as good to use on your own characters, so I don't really see this seeing a ton of play. And the rare is a great card to try and win that last expedition and take the game, but it's so impractical early on that I think a lot of players won't justify running this. For Nevenka, I think this has to be at least as good as Small Step Giant Leap, so I'm gonna give it a 2. But for a rack, you don't want this at the start of your turn, and in Fen, if you draw into this early on, it could be a problem, so we're just gonna do ones. All In really embraces the feel of Lyra. In the Venka, where you might be able to control your dice rolls, this could be pretty good, but for the other heroes, I think that it's just a little too random and expensive to be worthwhile. With the upgrade now, since you can pitch something from the reserve to modify the dice rolls, maybe it could see some play in Fen. But for Nevenka, since you already had some control over the dice roll, I feel like that the upgrade is a little unnecessary. And this is one of the best removal from beyond the gates. While it is situational, it hits enough things that I think it'll have use in every matchup. And until the meta settles, I think you'll want something like this for random permanents and Robin Hoods or anchored characters. Even in a rack where you don't love this off the top, since it hits permanents, you can at least take out one of those at the start of the day, so I think that you're not really sad to see this in anyone. The rare costs less, but not being able to hit permanents makes it a lot more situational, so I'm not a big fan of the upgrade. If you discard a card from the reserve, Paint Prison is pretty similar to Cloth Cocoon. It can hit more things, but it just puts them back on top of the deck, which I'm not a big fan of. So I think in most scenarios it's worse, but in Fen, where it's pretty easy to pay for the extra cost, maybe you could run this. And the upgrade's only really better if you just play it for the full cost of 4, but at that point it feels pretty expensive and not worthwhile. And now let's take a look at the most expensive common in Beyond the Gates. If you hit two cards that cost more than nine collectively off of the top of the deck with this, maybe it could be good, but I really don't think it's worth running anywhere. Even if you build your deck right for this, there's still a good chance you won't hit good stuff off of the top when you play it, and also you'll end your turn immediately so your opponent has the rest of the day to respond to you. So it doesn't really seem realistic from hand, but maybe in a rack where you can get this for free off of the top of the deck, it could see some play. The rare costs a little less, but I don't think it's quite enough to make it super viable. If you have enough discount support abilities or things like Mighty Gen, maybe you could try and play this from hand now in a rack, but it's definitely not super good and just more of a fun card and an option, so it's not going to get more than a 2. Looking at the out of faction spells, Hooked is a little underwhelming to me. It can be good against certain bureaucrats and cards with zeros and stats, but I think it'll be dead too much, so I'm not a huge fan of it. I'm giving this a 2 though in Nevenka because now it has a second use to move some of your anchored characters. If you start the day with a huge Mage Dancer, you can use this to switch Expeditions if your opponent only plays to the other side, and it can also be good to switch Expeditions if you anchored a character with a 0 that ends up in the wrong Expedition. For Magical Training, I don't think it's quite as good in Lyra as it is in Izmir because there's not a ton of spell synergy. Maybe you run this in Nevenka to dig for some of your key cards, but in Fen where this might get put straight in the reserve, it feels kind of bad, and in Iraq this doesn't have synergy either. For Spycraft, I feel like it's a little expensive for a Sabotage, but it does work from hand and reserve, so it might see play in Fen. But for the others, I think you'll be sticking with Tinkerbell or Tanuki. And Off You Go is a pretty strong removal. It conflicts a little with Fen and Iraq, but in Nevenka there's nothing holding you back, so I think you'll be running this. But for Fen, where this might end up straight in the reserve and cost 4, it feels a little bit worse than Cloth Cocoon. And in Iraq, I think you really have to limit the number of spells you run, since you might get them off of the top of the deck. So I think there I'd opt for the common Cloth Cocoon as well, and I don't think you'd want to run this in addition. I was super excited about Small Step Giant Leap originally, but having playtested it, I think that sometimes having that option to get a free win at the end of the game isn't worth the 
possibility of drawing this early. A lot of times you'll just be able to win through normal means anyway, so this is a little bit situational, but when it works, it's super powerful. People could definitely justify running this in Nevenka or in Iraq where they try and get it off the top or finish a game after playing aggressively, but in Fen where you can't control your draws, I think this is just a little too risky to be worth it. Looking at the permanents, the first is an alternate win condition. This will definitely be hard to pull off in Iraq, but in the other two heroes, you can maybe run it. For Fen, you see a lot of cards and have some nice support abilities that could help with this. And in Nevenka, it is possible to get a free anchor with your hero, so maybe people will mess around with this, but I don't think it's super competitive. Looking at the rare, it helps out your game plan a lot because you can now give anchored fleeting or asleep with its effect. I do think Fen's the most suited to play festival, so I'm going to give this a 3 because if you're running it, I think it's best there. But I'm still not super sold on the competitive viability, and it is possible to run this in Nevenka, so I'm going to give it a 2. But if you try it and it doesn't work out, don't get mad at me. The Lyra Bastion does nothing in most decks, and it's pretty expensive just to sometimes help you in Nevenka, so I'm gonna give it a 1 everywhere. If you run this card, it'll be the rare in Nevenka. I'll give it a 3 for her just because it seems necessary for the game plan. It's kind of sad though that you have to pay 3 mana just to sometimes improve your dice rolls. You might get the best dice roll anyway, or you might roll 2 and still not get what you want. So while this increases your odds a little, it is sad that we have to run a card like this. But I think it's probably worthwhile in Nevenka, and with Martingale and this, it can get really easy to get the rolls you want. Aether Shard's so expensive, and maybe you'll see this in a deck that's trying to use Lyra Festival to help you dig for your combo pieces, but I think this card is just pretty bad and not gonna see play. And the Izmir Bastion could be really cool to play Mind Apotheosis or Small Step for free, but in the current expansion, I think that there are just so few spells for Lyra that you won't really be able to get advantage out of this. Congrats on making it through another review. I want to thank some of my teammates who gave feedback and helped me get to these final ratings. We're still exploring everything that Beyond the Gates has to offer, and if you have a different opinion on the strength of any of these cards, feel free to let me know in the comments. I received my display from Gamers Guild recently. It came incredibly fast, which was refreshing after waiting so long for the Kickstarter. It was a blast doing the opening, and there was a nice surprise inside. Watch for that video to show up on my channel this coming week. If you're looking to get your hands on some cards, make sure to check with your local game stores or order from Gamers Guild through my affiliate link in the description. If you made it this far, make sure to drop a like. Thanks for watching.